8.4 is annuities, future value. So an annuity is a series of regular payments at the end of some unit of time. So you need to make a clear distinction between what is simple compounding interest or a compound interest question where you put money in the bank and you leave it there and don't touch it again, as opposed to an annuity where you're going to make an, a payment, a payment every interval, a regular interval. So it may be that you're making um, a payment every month. It could be the end of every week or once a year, but you're doing it more than once. And that's going to define what an annuity is for you. So in this example, it says Rebecca deposits $200 every month. So you see this word every, you know that it's a payment that's being made more than once. She's not just putting $200 in the bank and leaving it there. She's doing it more than once every month into an account that pays 6% per annum compounded monthly for eight years. Find the balance. So your textbook shows all these different timelines, and I think it's a good way to present it a first time. After that, you should be just able to use the formula. You shouldn't be able to have to write out a timeline every time, but this will help you to understand what's happening. So let's take a look at the timeline. So at the end of the first month, she puts in $200. The end of the second month, the third month, the fourth month, and so on, all the way out to eight years, which is 96 months. So each of these this $200 that's paid at the end of the month, right? So when you put that in the bank, that's all it's worth. So if I wanted to figure out the interest calculation, you'd say, well, that's 200 times this interest rate, which is 6 divided by 12, right? So 0 0.005 to the power of 0. So this makes 1, right? So she had $200 from this last payment. How much was this little $200 payment worth? Well, that was 1.005 to the power of 1 because it was there for one month. So if I continue on, there's a whole bunch of little interest payments of $200 and each of them has a future value. So the money that she put in at the end of the first month has been there for a total of 95 months at the end of this time period. So that's 200 times 1.005 to the power of 95. And we can work backwards all the way because this is a zero. So this, this is like, remember when we did arithmetic or geometric sequences, this would be T1, T2, T3, T4. So they're, uh, so not T4 because that's 92, but there'd be one less at the end. It's not really that important, but what you want to know is what is the sum of all of these payments? So that takes us back to this equation, which was the sum of a geometric series. So we had an a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. But now we have a future value. This is the same equation, only we're plugging in different, um, different letters here. So fv means future value future value. R stands for regular payment. So that's her $200, right? The 200, a regular payment, regularly paid every month for eight years. And our R value here is 1 plus I to the power of N. So that was 1.05. I was our 0 0.005 to the power of N minus 1 over I. So I is simply your interest, oops, spelled that wrong, interest, and N is your conversion periods. You might hear it called conversion periods is the number, number of interest payments, number of payments, both regular and interest. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to be using. Now, when you see this R in the formula, your teacher may give you the formulas on a test. When you see R, that means regular payment, which should click in your mind that that means it's an annuity. Okay, so these are actually called simple ordinary annuities. And the reason they're simple and ordinary is because the payments are made at the end of a month 
and the payment schedule and interest payments are the same. So in this case, the um, interest was paid compounded monthly and the payments were made monthly. So those are the ones that you're going to be doing in grade 11 math. You're not going to adjust, you're not going to have, um, you know, a compounded semi-annually with monthly payments. That's not going to happen. They're going to be the same, monthly, monthly. Okay, so when I flip this over, we're going to do the calculation to see what the sum is of all of these regular payments. So $200 every month for eight years. So here's my formula. Future value is the regular payment. So I'm going to put $200 here. The interest rate was 6%, 6% per annum. And that means 0 0.06. And it was, this is annually. And we want to know what it is monthly. So, so that's 0 0.005 monthly. Okay, and our N was six years monthly. Was it six years or eight years? I think it was eight years, wasn't it? Eight years. Okay, eight years monthly. So we should have an eight year. Eight years times 12. That's going to give me 96 for my N. Now all you have to do is do the calculation. This is, a, this is a really easy unit if you just follow the rules and get uh, the difference between an annuity figured out in your head and uh, compounding interest period. It's hard to talk and do things at the same time, isn't it? So 1 plus 0 0.005 to the power of 96. Subtract 1. And we're going to divide by the interest rate. So I is 0 0.005. Okay, so that is a big calculation to do. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to magically tell you what the answer is. You can try it on your own calculator and make sure that you get the right amount. Okay, the next question says, how much interest did she earn? So we know this is the future value. And we know how much she put in. So, I um, forget her name. Was it Rachel? Something like that. So she, we'll call her she. She deposited $200 how many times? 96 times, right? So 200 times 96. So she deposited $19,200. And look how much she got. Yay, she's so smart. So her interest, interest earned is going to be the difference between the future value. So 24, 5, 65, 71. And we're going to subtract $19,200. And that's going to give us 5, 6, 3, 5. So she made $5,365.71 in interest. Not bad, right? Over eight years. Okay, so let's do a couple more examples. This one, it says, Miss Havrat wants to go on a cruise to Antarctica to see the penguins. This is a true story. The cruise costs $20,000. She has four years to save for the cruise. How much should she deposit each month? See, each, this word, that means an annuity. So if I said, how much did she put in the bank today to have this amount? That would be the present value of a compounding interest question. But this is the key word here. Each month, right? A regular payment. And I give you an interest rate. So first things first, we need a formula. So if R times 1 plus I to the N minus 1 all over I. So let's figure out what we know. And you should always do that over on the side. So regular payment, hmm, that's what we're trying to find, right? How much should she deposit each month? I'm trying to solve for R. The interest rate, 3% per annum compounded monthly. So 3% per annum is 0 0.03. But I want it compounded monthly. So I need to divide this 0 0.03 divided by 12 
gives me the monthly rate. And that comes out to oof, 0 0.0025. Okay, so I have my I. And N, it said um, she has four years to save, and she's going to save monthly. So four times 12, that's going to give me an N of 48. Very, very important that you adjust your I and N to get the right, um, the right numbers to plug into your equation. So I have the future value is this. So what's R going to be? Can you figure out how you would isolate R here? Of course you can. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this, right? Because if I multiply this side by I over 1 plus I to the N minus 1, that's going to make this cancel out, be 1. And so I have R is going to be equal to the future value times, so I'm just flipping this over, I over 1 minus i to the n minus 1. Okay, so we've got our formula set up. We know what we're going to plug in, and all we have to do is crunch the numbers. So my future value, we should have put that on our information box over here. Future value has to be $20,000. Okay, I'm going to do it in red ink because I'm so confident now here. I've got the equation all set up. And my I is 0 0.0025. And in the denominator, I have 1 minus I. That should be 1 plus I. Why did I say minus? 1 plus I to the N. So that's going to be 1.0025 to the power of 48. Subtract 1. Okay, so saving some time, did the calculation, and I got $392.69. Not bad, right? Every month, if I put in almost $400 for four years, I would have enough to go see the penguins. And they're so cute. Okay, so let's try one more example here. And this one's a little different because you're trying to solve for N and I don't know if your teacher's going to ask you to do these ones or not. Probably. Um, so let's give it a try and I'll show you two different ways to solve. Sarah wants to invest $100 at the end of each month at 4.5% per annum. Okay, so that means I know what R is. She's putting in $100 at the end of each month. So I need to adjust the interest rate. So that's 4.5% per annum. That's 0 0.045, and monthly, I need to divide this by 12 per month. And um, that comes out to a really nasty little number like 0 0.00375. Okay, so we've got our, our I. Um, she wants to have how long before she will have, so will, that's future value. So that's my future value is 4,500 and I'm trying to solve for N. Okay, really good idea to write this out. It helps you focus on, um, on what you, what you have and, and what you need. So I have 4,500 here. My R is 100. And I'm multiplying by 1 plus i. So 1.00375 to the power of n, which I'm trying to solve for. Nasty, isn't it? It's in the exponent this time. Over 0 0.00375. Okay, so how am I going to solve this? Well, the first thing you're going to do is divide by 100. I don't run out of room. I'm going to divide by 100, divide by 100. Okay, so dividing by 100, that makes this 1, and I knock off the two zeros. So now I have 45 is equal to this. So what are you going to do? You're going to multiply by this, right? So step two, I'll do it in a different color. So 
I'm going to do 0 0.00375 and this time 0 0.00375. So I did those ones. So now 45 times this, this is going to cancel with this. Okay, so let's just write down what we've got here once we've we've cleared up all this mess. So now I have, if you multiply these two out, I'm, I'm going to do it just because, you know, trust. 0 0.00375 times 45 gives me 0 0.16875. 0 0.16875. Is equal to 1.00375 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so n minus 1, that's great. I know how to get rid of the 1 now. I'll bring it to the other side and add it. So now I have this 1.16875 is equal to 1.00375 to the power of n. Okay, so now you have to figure out what n is. And unfortunately, you haven't taken, taken a course on logarithms. And logarithms is really easy to solve. So I'm going to tell you how your teacher will probably tell you to do it. Maybe he or she will also explain logarithms to you, which just, is just a very simple way to solve. So let's say you don't know logarithms. The thing you're going to do is you're going to take your calculator and you're going to go 1.00375 to the power of, and you're going to use trial and error to figure out what n is. So let's say I did 20. Well, that's not close enough. I have 1.077. So I'm going to do it again. Let's do it to the power of 30. 1.11. I'm still not high enough. So you keep going. So you can see this becomes extremely tedious. Let's go to the power 40. 1.161. Well, that's close, but it's still not close enough. And the answer ends up being 42. So let's see what happens. 375 to the power of 42. How accurate we are. 1.17. Actually, it's 41.66. The real answer. I'm going to show you how to get that one. So let's say 41.66 and there you get 1.6875, the exact number. Okay, so trial and error will get you, it'll get you to the answer, but it's going to take time. Now I'll show you how to do it using logarithms. So with logarithms, you take the log of both sides. So I write log here, and, and that makes sense to you, I'm sure, because you know that if you do something to one side of the equation, you do the same thing to the other side of the equation, and you're not changing the question at all. So I log this side, log this side. One of the rules of logarithms is that the log of a number raised to a power is equal to the power times, so all you do is you bring this to the front here, Okay, so this is going to be equal to n times the log of 1.00375. And this is log 1.16875. So if you do this on your test, your teacher will say, who taught you that? And you can say, hmm, this Havrot's channel, YouTube channel. Or you can blame it on, on your mom or your dad. Okay, so if I want to solve for n, all I have to do is divide by the log of 1.00375, that makes 1 here, and I divide this by the log of 1.00375. So on your calculator, it's really nice calculation. You say log, see you've got this button here, log of 1.16875, bracket, divided by the log of 1.00375 equals, look at that, 41.66. Now, because this is a word problem involving payments, how long before she will have $4,500, 
it would be after her 42nd payment. So after 42 payments, and the payments are being made monthly. So you could take this 42 and divide it by 12, and that would tell you that she needs three and a half years. So make sure whatever the question is that you're being asked, if it says how many years before she will have $4,500, um, make sure you write it in uh, in years. Okay, so that's a, a little trick for you to help you solve a little faster those crazy end questions. Bye for now.